friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using the Mice Day to Celebrate stamp set by Birdie Brown for MFT. So I have stamped out my images in Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock. Before I get to the Copic coloring, I'm actually going to choose a piece of pattern paper from the Simple Stories Magical Birthday pattern paper pad. This is actually just a uh, little scrap piece from a previous card. And I'm going to use that along with my Copic color chart to choose my color combinations for my images today. So I'm starting with my little mouse and I wanted him to be a brown mouse. So I picked E50 and E51. And I'm starting with that E51 and laying in some shadows down the back side of his body and any place that I think a shadow should go, like on the lower part of his uh, chin area where his arm is overlapping and would be casting a shadow. So once I have that E51 laid in, I'm going to blend that out with the E50. I wasn't sure how dark I wanted him to be, so I actually started with these lighter colors, knowing that I might need to add some darker ones. So now I'm going to build up with that E53 and add a bit more of a distinction there between his darker areas and his highlights. And you can see how much that just really makes him pop more off the page. I'm going to blend that out with the E51 again. And I'm keeping a little bit of his face white and also his tummy and his hands and feet and the inner part of his ear. I just thought it would be fun to have some little white patches on him. Once I had everything blended out and smooth, I decided that I wanted to go even darker. And so I pulled in the E55. And once again, I'm going to just go over those shadowed areas and use the very tip of my marker. I don't want to have a real thick shadow. I want um, just a little bit of a subtle darkness on the outline of his body. The darker that you go with the shadows, the more dimension it's going to give your images because there's that much contrast between your darkest darks and your lightest lights. So if you're ever nervous about going for those darker colors right off the bat, you can do what I've done here and kind of build your way up to those darker shades just by um, adding those extra layers and adding one more darker marker in for each step until you achieve a look that you really like. I'm going to take my colorless blender and just go over the transition area between the E50 and the white to just create a nice soft blend as it fades into those areas. And then I'm going to use RV10 and RV11 to give him a little rosy cheek. I did a little oval shape with the RV11 and then traced the edges of that with the RV10. I'll also use the RV11 for his nose and I'm gonna add a little bit to the inside of his ear, which I will then blend out with the RV10. And I'll also add just a little of the RV10 to his hands and feet and tail. Next, I wanted to color the cherry, and this is where that pattern paper really comes into play. Normally I would choose some reds for the cherry, but that wouldn't have matched the pattern paper that I'm going to be using. So I pulled out some bright pinks that are going to match a whole lot better than a red combination would. So I picked RV23, RV25, and RV29. And I did a little shadow on the left hand side since that's the way the cherry is tipped. And then also accenting the little divot at the top and then blended out with the RV25 and finished with the RV23. And I did do a second layer on there to get everything nice and smooth. Then I'm going to go on to BG10, BG11, and BG13. And I'm going to color my little cake stand, or in this case, a cupcake stand with those shades. And I am going to add my darkest on the outside edges and then pull towards the center with my mid-tone and my highlight. 
So while I'm doing that, I just wanted to mention real quick that if you're watching this when the video first goes live, this is actually part of a video hop for my friend Jessica Frost Ballas. She has recently hit 10,000 subscribers on her YouTube channel, and so a few of us are celebrating with her and um, there's a whole bunch of really amazingly talented people. So all of that information will be in the description bar below. You can find the next link of the video to go to. Um, you're going to want to subscribe to all of these amazing creators YouTube channels and leave comments at every step along the way. She's got over $800 in prizes up for grabs, so the more that you comment, the better your chances are of winning one for yourself. So I hope you'll go down in the description bar and check out all of that information and continue on with the hop. And now I'll get back to the coloring. So I did two layers on that cake stand just to make everything nice and smooth and just increase that saturation. Then I'm also going to color the top section of the candle with the darker two shades. And then I'll use the BG10 to color in every other stripe on that candle so it has a, a, just a little bit of highlight so I can leave it white. And then I'm going to do the trim on the cake stand with some greens because I'm trying to pull in as many colors from that pattern paper as possible. And my green combo is YG21. YG23 and YG25. So I added that uh, YG25 first and then blended out with the YG23. For some reason my YG23 was coming out a little bit darker so I did go over the darker areas with that again just so it would be uh, consistent. And then I put the highlight in the center of each of those sections with the YG21 so it would create that rounded appearance. And then I skipped over a white stripe on the candle and went to the next one down and colored that with the YG23 and the YG21. The next combo I'm using is V22, V25, and V28. And I'm coloring the little cupcake liner. So I'm using that V28 on the right hand side of each of those sections of the pleats and also at the top where that thick frosting would be casting a shadow down on that as well. And then I'm going to start to blend out with the V25. And for some reason the same thing was happening to me where the V25 was actually coming out darker than my V28. I'm not really sure why that was happening, but I decided to just go over the darker areas again with that V25, and now I'm blending them out with the V22. So instead of having the V22 be my lightest, I decided to go ahead and pull in the V20. So that way I still have a nice contrast with that highlight. And then I'm going to go over that one more time with those marker shades to just beef up that saturation, like I said, and increase that contrast, especially in that area because those little pleats would be casting deep shadows there and I really wanted to accentuate them. So it's a really quick uh, process to do. I did take off the other end of my marker because it was really juicy and looked like it was about to leak. So I just took the other end off to equalize the pressure and continued coloring. I'll do another stripe on the candle with the V25 and the V22 and then I'm going to move on to my frosting and for that I decided to go back to my pinks but I'm going to add in the RV00 along with the RV10 and RV11 which is what I used on the little mouse's cheeks and ears. So I'm using that RV11 as the darkest and following the artist drawn lines and just going over each of those little scallops and ridges in that frosting. So this time I'm trying to pull in that really pale, almost cotton candy pink stripe in that pattern paper. So I used the hot pink on the cherry, but this lighter pink that almost kind of disappears into that plaid pattern is what I wanted to kind of pull out for this frosting. 
So once I have the RV11 laid in, I just blend it out with the RV10. And then I'm coming in with some quick washes of that RV00 on all of the white sections to just create that nice soft pink haze. I let that dry for a few seconds and then went back over a few of those little areas with the RV11 just to make those a little bit darker and accentuate those kind of crevices. So there was still the yellow stripe in that pattern paper that I hadn't used. So I decided to color in the flame on the candle and also the little stool. And I chose Y13, Y15, and Y17 for that. I added some shadow up on the legs underneath the seat. And then on the seat, I just blended toward the center so that it had a nice highlight in the center, just like the cake stand. And then I'm going to go back to my RV25 to do the last stripe on the candle. And I decided to do some multicolored sprinkles to also tie in that pattern paper. So I'm using that for a few of them. And then I'm going to go back to my Y15 for a few more. I wanted to represent a few of those colors. So then I did BG13 and just did a couple more, trying not to do any two that are right next to each other. And then the last one is the YG23. So once I'm finished with that, I just wanted to um, use my black jelly roll pen to accentuate my little mouse's eye and make that nice and bright and lively. And then I'm going to use a white gel pen to add a few little details. I'm going to do a highlight mark on the cherry so it looks shiny. And I'm also going to do some polka dots on my cupcake liner. So I'm just going down each of those sections of the pleats and adding some little polka dots just by doing a tiny little circular scribble with the tip of that pen and um, just creating a little bit of pattern that is going to give it that extra something on the card. And now I'll trim these images out with their matching dies. So now I'm going to go back to that magical birthday pattern paper pad from Simple Stories. And I'm going to go through and choose a couple different patterns to use on the card. I thought this one with all the banners was really cute and could work for the background on my focal panel. I also really liked this yellow tone on tone triangle. I thought that was really fun and um, just had a nice kind of graphic tone to it. And then I was going and flipping through the different patterns and trying to see what would work together. I didn't want anything that was going to compete with the busyness of that pennant banner like those scallops would have. Um, I eventually decided to use this um, purple dot and to go with the inspiration uh, plaid print that I had used for my coloring. So I trimmed all of these down with the MFT A2 Stitch Rectangle Stacks Set 2. I used the largest and the third largest. I'm going to pop the purple polka dot piece into my Misty so that I can stamp my sentiment. And I'm using Versafine Onyx Black ink. I wanted something really dark and crisp to stand up on top of that print, even though it is tone on tone and so it's kind of subtle. I still wanted the words to really stand out. So I stamped that down twice to get a really good impression. And I used the sentiment that says, Your friendship is the cherry on top. And then I popped my card base in my Misty. I'm using a piece of Lawn Fawn Mermaid cardstock and peacock ink to stamp on the inside and I did the one that says happy birthday from me to you and the little mouse that is holding the balloon which is such an adorable image I just love him so now I'm going to go ahead and start to adhere my pattern papers I'm going to take the one with all of the banners and glue that down to a piece of plain white cardstock this is just to give it a little bit more stability to have it on that cardstock, which is extra thick. And that way I can pop it up and use that as my focal panel. And then the purple polka dot I'm going to glue to the bottom, so that will be the ground. 
And then I'll take my yellow triangle print and I'm going to adhere that to my card base. These dies do leave just a sliver of that cardstock showing through, so that's going to tie in to the colors in my pattern paper as well. And then I'll do the plaid print right across the center, just making sure that's lined up nice and straight on there. I'll add some foam tape to the back of my focal panel, peel off those release papers, and then I'm going to line that up in the center of my card. I'm using that print to make sure that it's on there nice and straight before I press it down. And now I'm ready to begin adhering my images. I'm going to start with the cupcake on the cake stand because that is the larger of the images and make sure I have that kind of lined up at the right height that I want it on the card. I'm adhering that down with some liquid glue and then I will take the stool and add that so that it is standing at the same uh, level as the cake stand. So I want that to be um, on equal footing, I guess. And then I'm going to adhere my little mouse with his cherry, making sure to coat all of those little uh, ends of the cherry stem and his tiny tail so that they don't end up popping back up on the card. And then I'm going to add him so that he's standing on his tiptoes and kind of leaning in to place that cherry on top of the cupcake. As a final embellishment, I'm going to add my favorite Stardust Stickles and I'm going to put some of that on the cherry. And I just like to add a little squeeze and then use the nozzle to kind of push it around because I don't like to cover things completely. I like it to be a nice accent. And I'm going to also go over all of the little scallops on the cupcake frosting so that they'll have a little bit of sparkle as well. So I'm just kind of tracing over those lines again by just squeezing out a little bit and then using the nozzle to spread it where I want it to go. And I also will add just a tiny bit to the flame on the candle to finish things off. So I'll lift this up to the camera so you can see how it catches the light and I'll give you another peek at the inside. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. And please check out Jessica's video hop down in the description bar if you're watching this when it first goes live. The winners will be announced on Jessica's channel on April 9th, 2021. If you're interested in any of the products I used today, those will also be linked down below. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.